This informational video was created to provide you with a practical understanding of a new incentive created under the recently passed Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, the Qualified Opportunity Zone Incentive, brought to you by the Pilot Legacy Private Equity Group, leading the Opportunity Zone investment mission. There are three primary benefits to investing in a qualified opportunity fund. One, the deferment of capital gains taxes when the gain is invested in a qualified opportunity fund. Two, there is a step up in basis once the deferment expires, resulting in lower taxes. And three, there is a tax exemption on qualified opportunity fund gains when the investment is held for 10 years. But before we can fully understand the benefits of the Qualified Opportunity Zone incentive, let's re-examine conventional investing with no favorable tax treatment. The following example assumes asset growth of 7% per year and a capital gains tax rate of 20%, with taxes deducted from the asset when incurred. We begin with a generic $100,000 investment. Over time, the asset grows, and in this case is sold for a 100% profit. This generates a capital gain and a corresponding capital gains tax. Once the tax is paid, the taxpayer is left with a post-tax amount of $80,000 beyond the $100,000 originally invested. If that amount is subsequently invested in, say, the S&P 500, for example, a new basis in the investment of $80,000 is established and the asset begins to grow. Notable, however, is that it takes approximately four years to recover the value lost to the previously paid capital gains tax. This is certainly not ideal. Assuming the investment is held through eight years and then sold, a new capital gains tax is incurred by virtue of the subsequent capital gain above and beyond the investment's basis of $80,000 back in year one. If the post-taxed funds are again reinvested, a new basis is established. Growth ensues until another sale, and the cycle repeats over and over, essentially taking two steps forward and a half step back with each sale and tax cycle. This is not the best strategy to build your wealth. Let's now examine how investing in taxation is altered through investing in a qualified opportunity fund. Again, for comparison, we assume 7% annual growth and a capital gains tax rate of 20% with taxes deducted from the asset when incurred. We begin with the same scenario, a $100,000 capital gain which generates a $20,000 capital gains tax. But rather than pay the tax, we defer it by investing the capital gains into a qualified opportunity fund within 180 days of the date in which the gains were realized. The taxpayer accomplishes this by submitting an IRS form 8949 with the tax return at the time in which the capital gains tax would otherwise be paid thereby notifying the IRS that the capital gains are to be earmarked for investment in a qualified opportunity fund. The eligible funds are invested in a qualified opportunity fund with the otherwise due capital gains tax nested within the investment and deferred. One would normally assume the qualified opportunity fund investment would have a basis of $100,000 but instead it is treated as an investment with a basis of zero while having an immediate value equal to the amount invested. This statutory mechanism exists to ensure the previously deferred capital gains tax remains in play during the lifetime of the deferment. As the investment grows, the deferred capital gains tax remains nested within it. If the taxpayer elects to sell the investment after year four, the ensuing sale value would convert completely to capital gains because of its statutorily created basis of zero. A resulting capital gains tax would be incurred and owed. 
Once paid, the deferred capital gains tax is accounted for and the taxpayer is left with a post-tax gain, in this case $105,000. This is certainly better than the $80,000 post-tax gain which would have existed but for the Qualified Opportunity Fund investment. However, this scenario does not maximize the benefits of the incentive. Let's assume now the investment is not sold in year four, but rather is sold after five years. In this scenario, there is a 10% step up in basis. Since $100,000 was invested, the new basis would be $10,000. The capital gain is reduced by the step up in basis, and consequently, so is the ensuing capital gains tax. Once paid, the deferred capital gains tax is accounted for, and the taxpayer is left with a post-tax gain, in this case, $114,000. Holding the investment for five years introduces the 10% step up in basis, making the post-tax gains much greater. But as in the previous example, this scenario too does not maximize the benefits available under the incentive. Assuming now the incentive is not sold in year five, Let's examine the benefit of holding it for seven years. In this scenario, once the investment is sold, there is a 15% step up in basis, 5% more than if the investment was held for five years. Since $100,000 was invested, the new basis would be $15,000. The capital gain is reduced by the step up in basis, and consequently, so is the ensuing capital gains tax. Once paid, the deferred capital gains tax is accounted for, and the taxpayer is left with a post-tax gain, in this case, $130,000. Holding the investment for seven years introduces the 15% step-up in basis, making the post-tax gains much greater. However, it is very important to understand that there is a sunset provision on the capital gains tax deferment under the Opportunity Zone incentive. The tax deferral provisions expire on December 31, 2026. Those who wish to maximize the tax mitigating provisions of the incentive must be fully invested for seven years before the sunset. This means taxpayers have until year-end 2019 to invest their eligible capital gains into a qualified opportunity fund in order to apply the 15% step up in basis to deferred capital gains taxes and by year end 2021 to apply the 10% step up in basis. Beyond those dates, there is not enough time to fulfill the step up eligibility criteria before the sunset is reached. Now let's examine how to fully maximize the benefits of the opportunity zone incentive. We assume in this scenario that the investment has been held at least seven years with the intention of holding it through year 10. Once the sunset date of December 31st, 2026 is reached, the original tax deferment expires and the capital gains tax must be realized and paid. Normally it would have been 20% of the original $100,000 invested, but since the investment has been held for seven years and is not sold at or prior to the sunset, there is no additional gain to be taxed, only the originally deferred tax. The 15% step up provision is applied to the deferred capital gains tax, reducing it from $20,000 to $15,000. Once paid, the deferred capital gains tax is accounted for and the taxpayer is left with a post-tax gain, in this case, $146,000. Holding the investment through seven years activates the 15% step up in basis on the originally deferred capital gains tax, leaving the rest of the investment to grow. Assuming now the investment is held and then sold after 10 years, the maximum benefit of the Opportunity Zone incentive is realized, yielding $191,000 and with no capital gains tax owed on the gain of the investment. Generally, the most effective tax mitigation and wealth building strategy under this incentive is to be fully invested by year end 2019 and to hold the Qualified Opportunity Fund investment for 10 years. The sunset on the 10 year tax exemption incentive is December 31st, 2047. 
We invite you to learn more about this incentive and opportunities to participate at pilot-legacy.com.